Hi, I'm Dr. Fritz Mora. Today we're going to be preparing tooth number 30 for a complete cast crown. Before we begin preparation, we must ensure that our putty reduction guide fits perfectly on the tooth surface. To see the making of a perfect putty guide, reference my video on ACC 30. We'll begin preparation from the buckle view by turning the patient's head to the left. We begin with a coarse chamfer burr. Throughout preparation, it is important to consider the rotation direction of the burr. This rotation direction can be changed on the control screen for an electric handpiece. Whenever we are cleaving large amounts of tooth structure, we do not want the burr to be rolling with the direction that we are moving. Here we are going to be moving from mesial to distal, so the burr should be rotating to the left, counterclockwise. Using a finger rest on each hand, use your left hand to support the handpiece. We begin our reduction from mesial to distal using a systematic approach. Our goal is to set the finish line as close to our desired location as possible. This will minimize the amount of passes we need to achieve an ideal prep and save time. For a chamfer burr, keep your eye focused on the tip of the burr. This will help you to avoid the creation of a J margin and to ensure the proper depth of reduction, 50% of the width of the burr. Change the direction of rotation to clockwise to extend the finish line towards the mesial interproximal area. Ensure that this buckle reduction step is completed before moving to the next step. For the next step, lingual reduction, we turn the patient's head to the right. Select the desired angulation and continue placing the finish line in a systematic manner from mesial to distal. Ensure placement of the finish line in the desired ideal location. We do not want to have to repeat steps. The quickest way to finish a crown prep is to only do it once. Complete the lingual reduction before moving to the next step. The next step is interproximal separation. We begin by using a thin 850 burr to reduce the bulk of tooth structure before moving through with our final burr. This step can be completed with an occlusal view as shown or with a direct buckle view. In this demonstration, this step is completed in multiple passes. Be sure to be patient and methodical. Ensure to follow through with completion of this separation as you approach the lingual side. Flake away the protective enamel shell. Repeat the interproximal separation on the distal side in the same manner. Upon evaluation from the direct buckle view, we can see that our interproximal separation needs to be moved gingivally. Complete this as necessary before moving on to the next step. Next, we will complete the interproximal separation using our final burr. Check the amount of clearance you have before moving through and proceed accordingly. This step should be completed very slowly and methodically, again watching the tip of the burr and watching the side of the burr closest to the adjacent tooth. Keep in mind that the more apically the burr is positioned, the more clearance you will have as the tooth is narrowest at the neck. Moving on to the mesial aspect, the separation is completed in the same manner. The next step is occlusal reduction using a direct view. We begin using a coarse modified shoulder. The handpiece can be rotated to approach from the anterior to provide access and visibility. Again, note the left hand stabilizing the handpiece. We begin by placing depth grooves at the cusp tips and occlusal grooves. The burr should be parallel to the external surface of the tooth. The goal is to place these depth grooves to the final desired depth of 1.5 millimeters for the buckle and 1 millimeter for the lingual cusp. Let's evaluate using a 0.5 millimeter probe. Using the mirror to evaluate, our first groove is at 1.5 millimeters. Our buckle groove is only at 1 millimeter. Next is at 1.5 millimeters. And finally, 1.5 millimeters. Here's another look at our commonly under-reduced buckle groove. We must fix this before moving to the next step. Now we are at 1.5 millimeters. Proceed with 1 millimeter depth grooves on the lingual aspect, again at all cusp tips and occlusal grooves. Measure in a similar fashion, and again, watch out for the lingual groove. Proceed with the 1.5 millimeter functional cusp reduction. This reduction can be evaluated with a direct view rather than with a mirror. When measuring, visualize where the external surface of the tooth once was. The depth grooves are now completed. 
we use a mechanical pencil to mark the bottoms of the depth grooves. In this way, we will see the pencil wear away as we reach the final depth. We can turn the burr on an oblique angle such that the tooth structure cages the burr so that it does not drop into the depth grooves. By turning the burr on an oblique angle, it is impossible to change the depth of the depth grooves until we have reduced all of the tooth structure between the depth grooves. From here, we simply reduce the struts of tooth structure that are between the depth grooves until we see the pencil lines start to wear away. Keep in mind which depth grooves signify peaks and which depth grooves signify valleys. During this step, we are of course still cleaving large amounts of tooth structure, and so the rotation direction of the burr should be against the direction that we're moving. Anticipate any areas that have not yet been prepared. These will need additional reduction. Checking occlusal reduction, find and mark any areas that are under-reduced. This spot has one millimeter of reduction where it should be 1.5. Note the amount of reduction needed such that decisive corrections can be made. This spot has 0.5 millimeters of reduction where it should have one millimeter of reduction. Let's mark it and move on. We also mark the lingual and buccal areas that have not yet been reduced. We adjust each of the marked areas by the amount required. Remember that a half millimeter is half of the diameter of the modified shoulder burr we're using. On re-evaluation, we can see the correct depth measurement. We adjust the buccal and lingual untouched areas by adding a 0.5 to 1 millimeter bevel. Check the new clearance with the putty reduction guide. The same is repeated on the lingual side. We begin smoothing the occlusal surface with a fine chamfer burr. Whenever smoothing, we want the direction of rotation of the burr to be rolling with the direction we're moving. This is the opposite to how we had been using the burr so far. Additionally, while smoothing, the angulation of the burr is changed very slightly with each pass to allow the burr to round that sharp angle. Flipping the handpiece to the lingual side, the direction of rotation will need to be changed again in order to continue rolling with the burr. Here is a good example of changing the angulation of the burr with each pass, which is necessary to round a sharp angle. We can appreciate the results. Switching to a fine football burr, we can round the concave areas of the occlusal surface. Do not use the football to smoothen convex or flat areas, as this will result in divots in the prep. Moving on to our direct buckle view, we begin refining the finish line circumferentially proceeding methodically from one side of the tooth to the next. Note that each brush stroke of the burr overlaps with the previous and extends beyond. In this manner, we proceed across the entire finish line in a systematic way. Flake off any debris using a probe. For better visibility, in the distal area, I work from lingual to buckle, the opposite direction. Work on each area in the direction that is most comfortable to you. We proceed to the lingual side in a similar overlapping manner, remembering to roll with the burr. Here in the mesiolingual area, we notice that the finish line is too far supragingival. There is a slight defect in the distolingual area, which we can correct in the same way. Interproximally, we notice the finish line is too supragingival. From this view, however, we can also appreciate that the contour of the axial wall is exactly that of half of the chamfer burr. We correct the finish line position to 0.5 mm supra gingival and confirm. It is essential to evaluate your axial reduction circumferentially from the occlusal view using a mirror. With this view, we can immediately see thin areas of our finish line, in this case the mesiolingual and distolingual areas on the left side. We correct those sharp line angles in the same smoothing manner. Reevaluate to confirm. The distolingual line angle is a little square, and I'll mark it before adjusting it. Here we are again rounding the line angle in a similar manner with our smoothing motion rolling with the direction of rotation of the burr. Always reevaluate the evenness of your finish line from the occlusal view using the mirror. Smooth any newly created sharp areas. A final and very important step is to round these marginal ridge areas. These are commonly left sharp. 
We round these areas in a similar way, using intentional and light brush strokes of the burr, changing the angulation between each brush stroke such that we round the marginal ridge. Note that I lift the burr between each pass so that we are always brushing in the same direction. We can appreciate the big difference this step makes. Check your preparation from all angles to ensure all criteria have been met and no visible defects are present. Corrections to inaccuracies can be the most time-consuming part of preparation by far. Thus, our goal has been to idealize the prep at each step along the way. In this way, we achieve a prep requiring minimal or no adjustment. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below. Thank you for watching.